Hello everyone, my name is Andrew Aziz. I'm the author of How to Day Trade for a Living and founder of Bearable Traders and Peak Capital Trading. In this video, I would like to invite you to walk with me through the education for how to become a trader. How to become a day trader. There's a lot of people asking me, emailing me to ask specific questions about their trading journey. So I decided to record this video for you to walk you through from the basics of the trading all the way how to build a several successful day trading strategies. In this video, I'm actually going through three of the most important strategies that I myself trade every single day at bearabletraders.com with the recent examples. Now I invite you to join me in this journey. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment or email me andrew at bearabletraders.com. I'm also in all social media at bearabletraders. Again, if you have any question, comment in the section below and I personally read all of the comments. Thank you so much and enjoy this presentation. Thank you so much for watching this video. <clears throat> Let's start uh, this uh, how to day trade for a living complete guide presentation. I, again, I'm Andrew Aziz. I'm uh, in uh, my office in Peak Capital Trading <clears throat> in Vancouver. So I broke down this presentation to six parts. First, I'm going to talk about a little bit of introduction and uh, you know how uh, day trading is and how it's different from other style. And then in the part two, I'm going to talk about what markets to day trade in, stocks, options, crypto, and uh, again, some basics about day trading. In the part three of the presentation, I'm going to talk about the technology and tools that you need for day trading. It's very important uh, to recognize those and be ready for uh, day trading. In the part four, I'm going to talk about the strategies that they'll be using uh, for day trading. I talk about the strategies that I personally use, three, four strategies um, and the details of how they work. Uh, a little bit about psychology of trading because it's very important. Uh, trading is a high performing field and it's extremely important to be mentally ready for that. And in the part six, I'm going to talk about building uh, a winning trade book for yourself uh, or a couple of strategies all together combined. Uh, you know, build uh, a couple of trade books for yourself. <clears throat> I'll talk about what the concept of trade book is. For those of you who don't know me, you know, these are based on my books, How to Day Trade for a Living and a couple of other books like uh, Beginner's Guide for Investing and Trading, Mastering Trading Psychology and Advanced Techniques in Day Trading. So uh, for those of you who have not read those, you can go to my website, bearabletraders.com forward slash gifts and you can actually download the PDF of these books. Uh, I'm in social media as well. If you have any question, you can just uh, sh give me a shout out. I'm mostly active in Instagram and uh, Twitter. Or you can just always email me, andrew at bearabletraders.com if you have any question. Or leave in the comments. Uh, I will uh, review the comments of this uh, uh, presentation, uh, these presentations on YouTube uh, closely myself. And, you know, just leave a comment and I'm happy to answer those. Uh, if you want to you know, be more in touch, I'm trading live at bearabletraders.com almost every day if I'm not traveling. You know, it's a really good group of uh, people, a couple of thousand traders trading next to each other. And uh, we have a series of experienced mentors that can help uh, traders to become uh, better traders. It's a really fun environment if you want to be part of a community, which I personally think it's very, very important uh, to be part of a community. Uh, you know, you can start learning any new career by yourself but if you when you're part of a community uh, you know a group of like-minded people I think it's gonna <clears throat> definitely help uh, you know uh, your uh, progress so part one introduction to day trading so you know I'll get this uh, question a lot about people who want to start trading uh, but you know they don't have a good understanding of how day trading works um, you know, if you buy and sell a position in just a matter of a day, then that's day trading. Uh, but if you buy and sell and wait for days or weeks or months, then you're essentially swing trading. And it's very important to recognize these two together uh, the, from each other because uh, at the end of the day, a day trader should go on cash. Uh, swing traders, on the other way, on the other hand, they can have the positions uh, for longer term and they can, you know, look at the market in a bigger picture. Day trading is more active uh, style of trading. You really want to uh, be involved with the market uh, deeply, uh, monitor it at least for a couple of hours for your positions. But swing trading is less active. You know, you can have your positions uh, just check out, uh, you know, uh, 
you know infrequently and see how it does but you know day trading is more really like uh, you know a job both of them are difficult don't get me wrong i'm not saying that swing trading is easier than day trading both of them are very difficult require edu education uh, but uh, definitely it's not something that uh, you know uh, promoted to be easy but day trading is more like a career more like a you know a job and business uh, swing trading can be more like a hobby you know because it's less active time involved in there the equipments that you need for day trading is a little bit more complex definitely you need more uh, screen uh, having extra screen is really helpful you don't really need it with any complicated PC because the programs that they're using are not that difficult or complicated but definitely uh, having extra uh, a screen help uh, for swing trading is much easier you know you can just use your laptop phone or just a very simple basic uh, PC can help but you know for day trading obviously uh, because you're monitoring market in a more uh, difficult way uh, it's uh, in, a, in a more you know comprehensive way you need definitely more screens yeah um, then um, you know so as a summary to you know to see the difference between day trading and swing trading again I just want to mention that day trading is very fast paced and uh, you know it's more active than swing trading uh, the capital requirement is a little bit higher for day trading if you want to you know start day trading you need a little bit of we recommend at least ten thousand dollar because there's overhead costs there's platform costs there is uh, commissions and uh, you know some softwares that you have to use for day trading that you know it's a little bit higher than uh, swing trading and it's more active and involved in the market so you know most of the volatility in the US stock market is from 9 30 to 11 a.m. Uh, and you know the market is closed at uh, 4 p.m. but for swing trading you know you look at the bigger picture and more overall overview and swing trading is for some people day trading is for some people most of the day traders are also swing traders as well but not necessarily all swing traders are uh, day traders all right so <clears throat> what are you day trading and that's another question stocks ETFs options crypto Forex what futures I personally like stocks and ETFs because uh, they're really simple and easy to learn there's always guaranteed the volatility on them uh, you know every day there's some news coming especially in the US stock market there's a lot of up and down uh, the market is not really open 24 7 and I think it's a uh, you know it's a benefit for that uh, because you know you want to cut it you know cut the day trading at a certain time you don't want to really look at the market 24 7 a crypto market for example is open 24 7 pretty much and you know there is always opportunity and you know it just makes a little bit uh, life a little bit more complex you know you don't know what time exactly you have to expect the volatility but for stocks you know exactly at 9 30 to 11 that's just the time that you're expecting the volatility um, the disadvantage or cons of uh, stocks and ETFs are you know they're not really capital efficient you need more money less leveraged and less borrowing is available US traders need $25,000 uh, to start. The overhead cost is uh, a little bit higher for broker platforms, scanners, that type of thing. Options are really good, they're more capital efficient. The commissions are lower, but they're more complex and more education is needed. Plus, you know, you are not guaranteed 100% always, you know, the opportunity is there. Crypto is really good, it's a simple platform, but the problem with uh, uh, crypto is that you know again the market is really 24 7 it's not regulated and there is not always a volatility uh, in the market you know sometimes you something starts running without really any reason uh, you know it's really hard when you don't know that structure of 9 to 5 4 p.m. in there currencies are okay too they're really cost-effective the commissions are really low almost none the overhead and platforms are really low and easy but the problem is you don't have a lot of uh, you know currency to trade so I think there are only major 11 major currencies that you can trade and day trading is really hard for them because uh, you know you have to look at higher time frame anything less than one hour in the chart is really not meaningful it's just like a noise so day trading is significantly uh, more difficult on uh, on currencies I personally love uh, stock market and uh, you know I think uh, <clears throat> it's um, you know there's a lot of opportunities in there you know obviously it's the exchange that the companies that are public they are being traded you know the famous ones are Apple Facebook you know meta or Google Amazon these are the companies that are 
uh, the shares are public. They don't belong to anyone specifically. It's just the public market. Uh, and inside the exchange, you can trade, you know, stocks or equities. You know, there are exchange traded funds. You can, you know, baskets of uh, companies that are ETFs. And then even you can trade real estate, you know, through ETFs. Yeah, you know, directly you can, you know, buy and sell into the real estate investment trust. You know, you can trade options on uh, options contract on the stocks, currencies you can trade directly. Uh, you can even trade the, or invest in crypto as well, you know, not directly, you know, buy and sell Bitcoin, but through the funds or ETFs that are providing these opportunities and so many other things. And like gold, for example, silver, you know, without really buying and selling physical golds, you can invest in the gold and silver and stock market. You just have to see what's the instrument, what's the ticker that is correlated exactly. And it's a regulated market in the U.S., high volume, very high volatility. Love that there's no other uh, market in the world uh, that you can trade. Uh, trading, uh, you know, uh, there are two types of trade that you can do. You can either go long or go short. And uh, I just need to explain on that because day traders can benefit from uh, uh, prices going up and also prices coming down. A long trade is when you buy something and you're expecting the price going higher, you make a profit. And if the price goes lower, then you make a loss. Going short is uh, when you are actually borrowing shares from your broker, you're selling it at that price, and then hopefully the price drops, and then you buy it at the lower price, return the borrow, and then make profit from um, the shares that you are uh, sold at the lower price or bought at the lower price, and then you actually make profit. So for example, you think the Apple price is gonna go lower, or Amazon prices are gonna go lower, you sell it, you actually become short by borrowing shares from someone else. When the prices went down, you buy them cheaper and you make a profit. So you might say, okay, who gives me these shares? The broker usually gives that shares and they're not really concerned about these small fluctuations. They're just having those shares ready in their inventories and they borrow it to you. And if you keep them overnight, they charge you interest, but they usually for day trades, there's no interest rates. Interest uh, on those borrows. So if you want to see it visually, if when you're going long and you buy it, you want to make a profit, the prices have to go up. If the price is going down, you take a loss. Going short is when you're selling it and the prices drop, you buy it at the lower price and then you actually make a profit. And if the prices go back up, uh, and you know, you have to take a loss because you have to go buy those shares and return it to your <clears throat> broker. Uh, and then you know that's why you know going short is a little bit tricky because you know you can get a squeeze if the price is going significantly higher then uh, you have trouble uh, you know finding that uh, shares to buy to return it's sometimes the prices you know the problem is you know the price can go up for forever uh, but when you go along you know the risk is the price becomes zero and then you lose everything you have but in the going short is the price can just keep going higher and higher and higher and higher and you you know there is no limit to amount of loss that you can get so it's a little bit tricky but there's a lot of opportunities in there this is an example of a couple of trades that i did for example this is nvidia the you know graphic uh, chip company so you know i bought the nvidia going long sold and i added more sold some from 170 to 172 and then again, going long again at 172, all the way up to about 173. So these are the you know, examples of day trades. You know, the green is when I buy, the red is when I sell uh, intraday. You see there's a lot of opportunities going up and down through that. How did I date, uh, trade these ones? What are the patterns? I'm gonna talk about this later in part four. This is another example of going short, like Tesla, for example, specifically this is a screenshot that I uh, posted. So the prices of Tesla is dropping from $210 to you know, below 200. And I took a short put trade here from 201. I you know, borrowed those shares, sold it at 201. The prices dropped to 197, 198. I bought them cheaper, uh, made the profit from the difference and I gave it back to uh, my broker and I made the profit. So that's just an example that day traders can benefit from prices dropping. Investors can't, you know, investors are, you know, when the prices are dropping, you know, they're losing money, but uh, traders are actually making uh, money on that. All right, so that's, um, <clears throat> you know, the good thing. Uh, I personally, as I mentioned, uh, you know, I trade uh, stocks uh, and equities, uh, but you have to remember that, uh, you know, that not every stock is tradable. 
it's very important that you know you recognize that the majority of the market is high frequency trading by algos and computers and uh, day traders are avoiding most of the stocks you know there are seven eight thousand public companies that are being traded and you're avoiding most of them uh, because most of them are just high frequency trading very small f uh, volatility day traders are looking for volatility and volume you want something the huge trading volume and big up and down and uh, you know most of the market overall is really not very volatile and sometimes when the, uh, there is a news coming about a company we call them these companies the stocks in play they gap up or down and then there's huge volume of trading coming and that's where day traders want to be you do not want to be in just any random stock all the time because it's just all high frequency trading and you definitely get chopped up or lose money to the algos but when there is a news coming that company you know price becomes so volatile that even algos don't work on that and if they do it's just there's so much opportunity as a trader as an intelligent trader to make a decision on that and usually these news are so bad or so good that they make stocks gap up or down what are those news earnings are the main uh, you know news that causes the companies are going to go up and down you know they surprises oh we lost the you know you know subscribers or we gain a lot of subscribers or contracts uh, these are kind of uh, information that you know the changing the fundamentals of the company and therefore the valuation of the company is going up and down fda approvals for the pharmaceutical companies is a big source of volatility uh, if they you know there is any drug getting approved merge and acquisition like you know you know twitter was going to you know um, being acquired by Elon Musk you know all of those volatility that came from it uh, contract win contract loss layoffs sometimes the stock splits or you know the, the problems that the company has management changes these are all news that can potentially you know change uh, the company uh, volatility a couple of examples like these are recent examples like Meta what uh, you know the company of parent company of Facebook Zuckerberg you know was on a downtrend suddenly the earnings came in you see huge drop huge volume you know these are a lot of opportunity on that same as Amazon Amazon was really on a downtrend like meta and they again the earning came in you know the company significantly dropped and uh, uh, you know the volume came up and then there was a lot of opportunity so this is the time that you want to trade and this is the time that algos really don't work you know there's a lot of opportunity trading on that and those fronts again the volume is looking in there like this is an screenshot of a meta trade that i did like you know at the earning you know i went long uh, you know from at 99 dollars all the way up to 103 you know that was just a great opportunity and i added a couple of times actually on my uh, position so i'm going to explain what is this strategy and how i got that again just very beautiful you know the <clears throat> trade that opportunity that you're giving and and one thing that is very interesting here is that you see the majority of the volume is in the early morning session so you really don't want to trade in the afternoons i personally don't trade in the afternoons mostly uh you know early sessions you know 9 30 these are new york time eastern time are really active if you want to know exactly what are the earning calendar and what, what the news coming some of them are breaking news but some of them are predetermined you know for example tradingterminal.com there's a calendar that you can go and see what companies are reporting earnings and these are the uh you know uh, companies that are all publicly companies we know any of them apple amazon mcdonald's shell intel you know google you know microsoft meta these are all companies that we know so we have a calendar that they are uh, earning uh, calendar that we know what time and day they're uh, giving this earnings so we can actually look for opportunity uh, day trading these uh, companies you know in a normal day i wouldn't trade apple but then there's a big news up and down I'm definitely very very interested in trading them so again a couple of other examples this is meta you know again gapping down from 325 dollars significantly to 250 you know heavy volume you know that's just a great opportunity uh, trading opportunity that's the volume that you're looking for so algos usually don't work really well in this uh, heavy volume because there's so much you know uh, buy and sells coming from different places because of the news that uh, gives you this uh, great opportunity for trading uh, another example is uh, GME so you know game stock you know most of the time you really you know very low volume you don't want to trade it this, around this time but when the volume is coming in just 
huge, huge volatility from $18 to $50, that kind of trade that you want to do that. Uh, most of the days, really, you know, there is nothing. Even if, you know, there is some uh, range, but, you know, you don't want to trade this because there's no, not much volume. So it just goes both ways. Even the price might go, you know, a couple of dollars up and down. But then the, there is no volume. Algos are controlling that. And you usually want to avoid that. When the volume is coming, it's good for trading. You know, you know, you see, usually the volume, when it comes, the range becomes bigger. Not always, but, um, you know, usually. So you see, you know, these are the, one, the ones that I avoid, but this is a good one for trading. <clears throat> um, if you, you know, don't know exactly how to find him, just, uh, you know, on the internet, our channel has this pre-market uh, live every morning. It's free. We start from 8.30 a.m. We go all the way up to 9.30. So you can actually come and see our scanners. And we are uh, looking at what, and, you know, the community is looking at what. These are more experienced traders. You know, you can get some ideas. You know, this is, for example, a screenshot of our ga a scanner gapping up and down. That's, uh, you, know, you know, these are the stocks that gap down significantly, 10, 15, 12, 5%. And these are the stocks that are gapping up. You know, and from them, we just go through them and see how, uh, what's the best uh, um, uh, up trading opportunities are there. Uh, TradingTerminal.com also has a scanner and news source that you can find. That's also another one. Uh, that you can use, um, you know, stocks that are gapping up or down uh, during the pre-market, as I mentioned. These are the stocks in play. So again, you do not want to trade random stocks every day. That's the recipe for just get, getting being eaten alive by uh, 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 by algos. Uh, again, if I want to uh, reiterate, uh, pre-market show that we have in our channel channel is free. And of course, if you're part of any community in, in our community, for example, Babel Traders, uh, we're, you know, you can see what other people are trading. That's uh, very, very helpful. Again, you don't want to be alone by yourself, uh, you know, when you are trading or and doing anything. You know, it's very important to see what other traders are doing. And, you know, uh, just usually that's the best part, you know, when being around other people gives you a really good uh, uh, idea of what other traders are trading and where are, you know, the volatility. Overall market, I don't really trade overall markets uh, on a normal condition because the indexes like a SPY and other indexes are really not that volatile. I'm just looking for individual stocks. But sometimes because of some news, the volatility is amazing on the whole overall market. Like for example, in the pandemic back in 2020, a lot of you remember that how amazing the volatility was. Uh, the whole overall market was gapping up and down significantly. And uh, those are those were the time that uh, you know <clears throat> I was uh, trading the indexes overall, and uh, you know look at the volume significantly in those couple of weeks. Then the pandemic was just significant, uh, but in the normal bull market, the prices, as you see, there is not much volatility. But prices overall are just going up, and you know the volume is low. Overall market is just going up, but. When you are actually in the pandemic, uh, like when there is such a uncertainty in the overall market, you can trade the indexes and ETFs as well. That's what I do. All right. So uh, the part two, you know, as we discussed what market we're going to trade. Again, uh, this presentation is all about, uh, you know, stocks and ETFs. Uh, I personally don't mess around with options a lot and crypto market. We discussed that. There is pros and cons with all of them. You know, there is really no best instrument to trade. For me, uh, I f again, I'm looking for stocks because they're really simple and easy to learn and there's always volatility in there. And the fact that they're not open 24 seven, it's a, you know, value added benefit to it. I don't wanna look at the market like crypto market all the time. You know, it's just, it's really hard for lifestyle. I had a friend that he was always looking at his phone for trading in the crypto market. And it's just not, I don't think it's very healthy, to be honest with you. You know, it's just the fact that you're coming, you trade for two hours or one hour, and then you're done with your day. I think that's a big, big, big value add. Options are really great too, but they're uh, really more complex. And, you know, there is more education you are needing uh, for that. And sometimes it's uh, not a lot of opportunities on that. Uh, so, therefore, this presentation really focuses on stocks. Again, it's really good for new big traders. You know, you eventually can, uh, you know, start with the stocks and ETFs and move to other, you know, like futures, options, contracts and stuff. But it's really good to start with the basics uh, on the stocks and ETFs. 
How do I find them? Uh, I find either through the stocks in play that we discussed. Uh, you know, there's the fundamental news. Uh, you know, scanners every morning either through our community or through tradingterminal.com. We have these scanners. And when the whole market is volatile, I trade uh, ETFs and market index indexes like uh, SPY or SPXL, QQQ or TQQ, Tesla, AMD and DDA. These are my usual suspects when the overall market is volatile. Most of the time we're trading just the stocks in play, whatever that is really having that fundamental news through our scanners. But, you know, having the market's uh, overall volatility, uh, especially since 2020, we had this uh, opportunity almost uh, every day trading ETFs and stocks. <clears throat> the strategies are the same pretty much because we're trading patterns and technical analysis. Uh, but uh, sometimes uh, when there is no stocks in play, you're looking at the overall market. And I've been trading for almost 10 years now and pretty much you're guaranteed every single day there is some volatility either through the overall market or through stocks in play. Um, something that uh, it's very important that I want to mention uh, about the stocks are not all the stocks are similar. Some stocks, we call them low float stocks. That means that float means the number of the shares available for trading. So essentially supply and demand, the number of the shares that are available in the public market. The penny stocks are the ones that the price of the companies are usually between $1 to $10. We call them penny stocks. They're really not penny, but we call them penny stocks. Uh, they're low float stocks most of the time. The number of the shares are less than 20, 30 million, and they're really volatile, you know, just going up and down crazy and, you know, very hard to trade. And the strategies that you have to use for those ones are different from the strategies that you're using for big companies like Apple, which is a large float stock or medium float stocks. They're a little bit different because these low floats are, the, dif the behavior of the price is different because there's a lot of, uh, you know, pump and dump involved in that. A lot of, uh, you know, uh, it's just volatilities in the nature of these uh, penny stocks. I personally avoid them. I really don't like to trade these penny stocks and I highly recommend new traders really not uh, mess around with them even though they're really attractive like a $1 stock can just pop up to $2 it's just people love it you know I say oh okay if I have thousand dollar I can make another thousand dollar with this but most of the time it goes the other way around you know most of the time you know the one dollar stock can drop become zero or very very bad drop uh, the volatility is too high so you don't want too much volatility because you know the managing and controlling your account and trade or risk would be very different. The really sweet spot for me is medium float stocks because you know the number of the float, the supply and demand, the number of the shares available for trading are smaller, uh, still small and uh, the volatility is really good. Uh, <clears throat> the price range usually between $10 to $100 usually, not always, but um, you know it's giving a lot of opportunities. And then the large float stocks that are, uh, you know, like mega caps stocks like Apple, Amazon, Facebook, uh, they're good too, but the volatility is a little bit lower. You can, you know, bigger, take a bigger position. Uh, but uh, overall, you know, I would, uh, I would say that I trade most of the time large float and medium float stocks, low float stocks. So how do you find them? Again, the float is the number of the shares issued by the company. As the company is growing, becomes bigger and bigger, they issue more shares. Uh, that's why the low float stocks, penny stocks are all startups and companies that are really small. But as the company is getting bigger and bigger, they, you know, they issue more shares and people buy those shares. So this is an example of Apple that float is 16 billion share. Uh, so there are 16 billion number of the shares available for trading. Uh, the market cap would be the you know, float times price would be the value of the company, the market capitalization. And obviously, the to average through range means that the volatility the company, you know, the price has during the day uh, is based on the float. Like the, the more the float, the volatility is going to come lower and lower. So it's very, very important to recognize that what we're trading and not all the stocks are different. It's so important. All the stocks are the same. So important to recognize that. Again, a couple of examples like uh, Taisha Gene Therapic. It's a low float stock. The float is only 24 million, 25 million, and the average through range is 30 cents on the company that is only three dollars. It's a penny a stock, and you see, in one day, it can move 100 percent. Wow, amazing! But again, you know, the volatility is just crazy on that. 
you have CarMax, for example, the float is 150 million shares and, you know, it moves like 6% a day, which is still really good for trading. Average through range is $3, $4 on a, on a company that is $61. Uh, that's really nice for trading and you have apple as a large float or mega cap that the float is 16 billion share that's 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 crazy you still have average through range of four dollars for a company that is trading 152 dollars per share but you know, as you see it's just like moves two percent three percent it's just the volatility is uh, smaller again i personally avoid low float stocks there's so many low float traders out there but i personally don't like them I really like medium float and mega caps because uh, for me consistency and winning slowly is very very important uh, the price this is an example of a price of a low float stock tsha like for example from two dollars goes up to three dollars that's amazing but you know look at this huge drop in a matter of you know five minutes from three dollars goes up back to 250 that's crazy so uh you know I, you know i'm, I'm really scared of uh, these kind of big drops on the low float stocks and i really want to avoid them they're really difficult to trade even though they look nice they're really difficult to trade and there's really good chance of having a big loss on that so you've got to be really really careful most of the time they don't have a lot of volume uh, and um, which is which is okay and nice but uh, you are staying away from them but uh, when they get the volume there are trading opportunities in there <clears throat> I personally avoid that so the scanners that we discussed, so the criteria for my scanners are the stock that is gapping up or down over 2%. The minimum volume is 10, 100,000 shares in the pre-market. Minimum float is 20 million shares float. So I don't really stay away from uh, low float stocks. As you see in my scanner, I can see all these criteria. And then price, I'm looking for $10 and more. I'm not really looking forward for any penny a stock and less than ten dollar <clears throat> and the real-time scanners is, is you know these are in the pre-market the stocks that are gapping up and down in the pre-market and then, then we have uh, the real-time scanners when they're in the pre uh, real time that when the market is open if there is any breaking news or anything comes then we can trade them so if you go to tradingterminal.com forward slash scanner it's a free term a free scanner that uh, we provided for you we also have the breaking news. Sometimes there's a breaking news during the market happens, the war or news or something comes out. You know, you can hear that. Like for example, when the Twitter news came in, the Elon Musk is going to buy Twitter. Like the, it was announced in trading terminal and just went up significantly. So that's also, I highly recommend uh, people, uh, you know, watch the breaking news, which we are uh, powering it by Benzinga. It's again, free for all traders. Hopefully you can actually use that. All right, in the next section, I want to talk about the technology that you need for day trading and how to get the proper tools for that. To, to be success, successful in trading, you need three elements. You need the right technology, right strategy, and right uh, psychology. You know, you need all three of them. They're like a three leg of a uh, stool. To remove one and then the whole system would collapse. A lot of people, just go and get the best technology, best computers, best, best broker, best platform, but they don't have any strategy and they fail. A lot of people have really good strategy for trading, but they're trading on their Robinhood or mobile app or something that is not good. They're just, you know, collapse. Some people know the strategy, they have the best technology, but they don't have the right psychology. They're like just gamblers trading, they lose money. So you need all three of them and the successful trade book, successful, you know, uh, trader is when everything is just all together at the same time so for technology we're talking about the trading setup PC laptop plus the broker and platform that you're using that also has uh, indicators and charts that you're using and how to set it up we were talking about the strategy we we're talking about the trading rules and frameworks you know what's the chart pattern entry exits trade management then most of the people are looking for this uh, strategy, but it's also very important to you know, learn about your you know, technology and also the psychology. So the psychology, obviously, you know, the mistakes that you can do you know, during the trades, uh, you know, trading is a very high performing field. It's extremely important to you know, work on your mindset as well you know, when you are um, you know, trying to become a trader and avoid the mistakes that you know, traders would do when like fear, greed, and that type of thing. Uh, for and this is my uh, own picture uh, of trading 
you know, as I mentioned, the screens are really, really important and you need a couple of a screen. You know, this is, for example, my own trading station at home. You know, I have six screens looking at the markets, uh, you know, in a different uh, <clears throat> uh, perspective. You know, you, you want to watch a couple of uh, stocks at the same time. Obviously, we have also our own chat room that is uh, in one of the screens. This is a typical screen that I have, you know, two charts that I'm using, one minute chart and sometimes daily or five minute chart. I have a level two that is part of my brokerage and platform. Uh, I have some scanners that I'm watching during the day and see what's uh, hitting the scanner and there is the criteria for, uh, you know, volatility. And of course, I have a watch list. It's just, just, a, just showing you what I have. I mean, it doesn't have to be exactly you're, when you're building. It doesn't have to be exactly what I have, but it's really important to build something for yourself that's uh, unique to you and your platform. And when I'm traveling, I'm using a traveling station. I have you know, the, some of these uh, portable monitors that I'm connecting it to my laptop. Again, you know, having a couple of a screen is really important for trading. Um, so you start with the basic setup. You really don't need a very complex setup. Start with really, you know, a simple uh, computer, a couple of screens, and as you get better and better, and you want to really become stay in this trading, you can actually go with the more sophisticated setups, with a more powerful PC, and the graphic cards that can go. I mean, but definitely, I started really, really simple in my home. And of course, if you're traveling, you can have more portable monitors that you connect to your laptops. Um, and as you grow, again, you can actually upgrade your setup. This is a picture of Carlos, one of our traders. You know, uh, he started like uh, much earlier in 2020 was his setup. And then, you know, in 2022, or 2023, he just upgraded to this setup that uh, you're seeing. So it's very important to remember that this is just a work in progress as you make more money and you become better and better, you can actually uh, upgrade your setup. So you really don't need to go very super sophisticated right at the beginning, just save the money for education. <clears throat> broker, I'm using, uh, you know, interactive brokers. That's my main broker. But you know, remember that for day trading, you need a really good pro uh, broker that gives you direct access to the market. A lot of people are, um, you know, uh, trying to go with the free commission uh, brokers or the brokers that are really not based uh, it's suitable for day trading uh, so you got to be really careful on that front again um, very very important to having a broker that is designed for active trading interactive brokers cobra trading uh, capital markets and td ameritrade is are the ones that uh, are really uh, well known for active trading and uh, we highly recommend that again depending on where you are based and uh, uh, how much you want to spend on your brokerage that's uh, these are the things that uh, you can consider but definitely I would stay away from uh, you know Robin Hood or some of the uh, free commission brokers because they're really not designed for active trading you know it's like going into a gunfight with a plastic knife you know because the executions are not really fast and there's the platforms are not designed for active trading it's mostly for swing trading or investing they're based that <clears throat> they're really simple to use but the execution are really not great and the execution is very important for active trading sometimes your orders have to get filled in a matter of seconds or minutes so it's extremely important to have this direct access brokers direct, direct access by direct access i mean when you press the order it gets into the exchange and gets filled immediately but in robin hood with some of the free commissions when you press the order it goes into a market maker route and you know it gets uh, you know some delay until it gets really filled and you know you miss this execution really so that's very important for you guys to uh, use the brokers and platforms that are direct access uh, trading platform is different from broker so for example uh, i'm using interactive brokers but i'm using a, a trading platform called das trader which is linked to my platform it's not a browser based it's a you know download the platform and uh, it allows me to make trades and set up my charting and you know indicators and studies in there a lot of uh, trading platforms right now is online on the browser based but this one is not you know it's actually based on you know a, a software that you download on your platform it's a really really powerful platform it's a direct access into the market uh, and i'm using that i highly recommend that trader it's again one of the really best platforms there are some other platforms as well like think or swim or you know, trade a station or depending on the broker that you're using they either give you an app 
or a browser-based platform. But the platform is different from uh, the broker. Platform is just something that you trade on. The broker is the one that actually you are filling the orders for you at the exchange. Brokers usually have their own platform, but sometimes you can go and you know the license the platforms for for your trading account that you link it to your broker. Uh, platforms they're special for the speed of execution, and you know they have a library of indicators and a study that you can use. Sometimes they're different. You can find something in one platform that is not in a different platform. And you know, for me, for my side of trading, Dash Trader is definitely one of the best, and I highly recommend that. But you don't have to use it. You can use any platform that your broker would uh, offer you. What I like about DAS is that, you know, again, the speed is really fast. It's a very robust platform. And, you know, you, you take the orders. It goes in the matter of milliseconds in exchange and get filled by your broker. And how the way that works is that you connect your brokerage account to DAS Trader. Uh, it does have a mobile application as well, but I'm not really using the mobile. I'm using, using it on, uh, on the desktop. Uh, and <clears throat> indicators are a series of mathematical, um, you know, indicators and studies that you're adding into your chart. Uh, everyone is probably familiar with these ones. You can, you know, add so many things into them, make them very complicated. But I personally uh, use it very, very simple. I use the price in the form of candlesticks and volume uh, for my main uh, indicators. I use a couple of moving averages as well. I use 9 and 20 exponential moving average and 5 and 200 simple moving average. So these four, four moving averages are, this is just a picture that I just put uh, just for fun, that do not overuse uh, indicators and studies and which I don't make it very complicated. 9 and 20 moving average are uh, the one that I'm using, they're exponential, the setting, and 50 and 200 are simple. There is really no magic number, you just, you know, these are the typical numbers that traders are using and the most important one is the volume weighted average price, the VWAP uh, that I'm using. Previous day close is a very important indicator that I'm using, and the pivot points are the one that I'm using. And I try to keep my charts are very simple and uh, not very complex. Like for example, this is my chart looks like, you know, a couple of moving averages, as I mentioned, on my chart, plus this blue line, which is the volume weighted average price, the most important one and uh, pivot points like this R3 that you're seeing here and previous day close. Yeah, so again, it's very important guys to keep your charts very clean. And uh, you know, there is really no magic indicators, whatever you choose, uh, stick with it and uh, try to develop your strategy based on these ones that you are having. The details of why we're using it and what are the criteria of this one, it's on our education center. Like for example, the pivot points, you know, Caramilla pivot points, Moving averages, again, there is no magic number for them, but the most important one that the day traders have is VWAP, the volume weighted average price, which is this blue line that a lot of strategies are based on that. So again, very important to remember that. Guys. <clears throat> now we're talking about the strategy. This is the most important part of the presentation. You know, we're gonna talk about the strategy that we wanna use. Uh, there are two overall strategy in trading. There are one of them that called trend trading that you know you try to profit in the direction of the price and counter trend trading that you're try, trying to um, take a reversal and take profit in the opposite direction of uh, price action. Uh, bull flag and ABCD patterns and opening range breakouts are the ones that are trend strategy. 920 reversal trades that I'm going to talk about this uh, uh, presentation is a counter trend or a reversal strategy that you are essentially taking the opposite direction of the price. When the price, for example, is coming down, you're going long to take a reversal on that. So, but overall, you know, what, no matter what the name that you're using, we have these two different strategies, uh, either, either trend or counter trend trading now. So the number one that I wanna use is opening range breakouts. That's the one that I really use a lot and it's just the best strategy in my opinion. So, you know, the stock that is gapping up you can go long, the stock that are gapping down, you can go short, and you can apply it to any time frame at the open that you want, like one minute, two minute, five minute, 15 minute, 30 minute, and 16 minute candlesticks. And the way that it works essentially is that, uh, you know, you look at, wait for five minutes, for example, for five minute candlesticks, you know, establish a candlestick. As soon as you break out the highs of or lows of that candlestick, you can go long or short probably long for the stocks that are gapping up and short for the stocks that are gapping down. 
in this example, PG, you know, a stock was gapping up, established the five minutes opening range to so this candlestick. I went long for, you know, from 89 all the way up to over 91. That's just, the, you know, the candlesticks that, you know, as you see, huge volume coming up and prices is staying above the VWAP. Another example would be five minute opening range breakdown on ELF. You know, this is the five minute candlestick. There's also a little bit of a week here, but we ignore that. Uh, you know the body of the candlestick is this one as soon as it break out you go short you know all the way down to the next level that you are having this is just a five minute opening range breakdown the candlestick can be one minute as well you know for example this is a one minute opening range breakdown on ccl so stock was gapping down you know established this short you know you go short as soon as the breakout is happening at 23 all the way up to 22 dollars for a profit right at the market open this is an open strategy you're trading it right at the open you know in the first minute first five minutes first 10 minutes usually doesn't work uh, in the afternoon session this is another example on amd you know you are just as you see you're establishing this five minutes as soon as the breakout of the five minute candlestick happens you go long and you put a stop loss below the vwap i trade this strategy a lot all the time it's very very powerful it's really uh, effective uh, if you recognize it properly, as you see from $53 all the way up to $56, you can just write this. The details of how, you know, a little bit of a detail on that, that I'm just skipping for this presentation. But, you know, if you have, if you go through my book or through the courses that we have, you know, we tell you exactly what are the entry and exits on this strategy, uh, you know, and there is the stop loss. The second strategy is bull flag and bull flag is a strategy is very well known very famous for crypto traders for currency traders essentially you're having a very strong move going up and then you're having a consolidation which we call it the flag as soon as the breakout of the flag happens you know you can go long for the you know for the next move up you know the name the bull flag is coming from the fact that it resembles uh, you know a flag like this is a very bullish candlestick and then you have a consolidation, you know, like a flag. And then as soon as the breakout happens, you can get in there and continue this. Like this is, for example, a picture, uh, example that we have like USD that uh, trades, you know, really nice move up like a candlestick, five minute candlestick, very bullish, very strong, like the pole. You have the consolidation. As soon as it, the, this pattern changes, you can go continue. And it can, it can happen a couple of times as well. Like, for example, this is. RIGL back in 2016, you know, just popped up. You know, there is a consolidation. You can go up as soon as the flag breaks out. You can go there for the next one. You know, again, a consolidation, and you can just go jump back on that. This is a penny stock from $3 to $4. As you see, it can happen a couple of times. So the strategy works on uh, like that, that, you know, as soon as the breakout happens, you go long with volume. As you see, the volume is also here. And you put a stop loss below the flag, so below this consolidation area, and then you can just exit for the breakout of the next uh, uh, price action. So as you see, it's a, based on the chart pattern, based on uh, you know the definition of a you know chart pattern in bull flag in this example. You know there's more example on that, like OPTT here. This is like a two minute chart again, a very bullish candlestick consolidation breakout, consolidation breakout, and you can you know it can just from two dollars to six dollars. This is just an amazing move that uh, you, know, you see you're here. Again, the breakout is happening with the volume. So whenever the volume is coming, you just go long and then you sell it as uh, it goes uh, uh, higher. All right, so the next strategy is ABCD pattern, which is very similar to bull flag. You know, that essentially a very big move up, a really nice consolidation, which we, you know, and support, we call it point C. And as soon as the breakout of that flag happens, you can go at the entry. So any, your entry would be between the support when you recognize that. And then as soon as the breakout happens, like the point D, you're going to get the next move up in this example, OPTT in a five minute chart. You had this really big move up. You had this consolidation or flag, as we call it. As soon as the breakout happens, you know, for the break of high of the day, you can just go continue. And what you're looking at is the volume and the volume is coming in. That's where you really want to get into that. This is a very similar pattern to, um, you know, bull flag. Sometimes people are just using it in the same, like bull flags are for the low float stocks, for the higher price stocks, they use the ABCD pattern. You know, any way that you want to do that. Like this is another one, American Airline. As you see, there's like, like a really nice uh, 
move up here toward here you have this consolidation of point c you know again this flag or this wedge that you're having the breakout is happening you can trade it then again another support here you can have another one here and then you know you can just move up like that so <clears throat> that's uh, that's a very strategy that a lot of people are using and remember the bull flag and abcd pattern are very similar some people are really putting at it uh, you know different model uh, you know but sometimes they're one so that's why opening range breakouts abcd pattern bull flag you can call this three strategy um that uh you know there is a little bit of a detail on these but again for the you know you know to just make it a little bit this presentation short i just want to go over uh, this presentation uh, these strategies really fast but the details of entries and exits are really into uh my book and you guys can uh, really read in details and uh, the last strategy that i want to talk about which is a very very powerful strategy is called the 920 reversal which is a counter trend reversal those uh, three that i discussed they were all um, trend trades this one is a counter trend so you know imagine you are going the stock is going up very strong when it drops to 20 moving average you buy again against the direction of the price and the price is just you know go back up even more and that's what uh, you know the 920 trade uh, is you know when you're buying and hitting the 20 moving average on a very strong stock you know that's what they call the 920 trade because you know when you touch the 20 moving average you go buy and then when it comes to the, toward the nine moving average you try to take your profit and as it goes up uh, you know you can just continue taking your profit this one this is strategies on a two minute chart only this is brian uh, developed this strategy i really really like this strategy this is one of my favorite strategies that the brian is uh, brian is actually introduced to our community the stock must be very strong above the vwap that's the first criteria and then any pullback toward the 20 moving average usually between 10 o'clock to 10 30 10 11 that's a really good entry it's a counter trend so as the price is dropping you buy and then suddenly it squeezes back up uh, toward all-time high so the target would be nine moving average or higher of the day so that's a, what just one example of a real trade that i did you know the apple was dropping you know again between 10 to 11 as soon as it hit the 20 moving average here i went long heavy at 144 popped up 144.50 all the way up to 145 and just continued going higher and I actually i kept adding it on the way up you know that was just a very beautiful day. again this is a, like a reversal trade you're trying to catch this reversal on a very strong stock that is going up i have more examples of that that our community are really trading this this is very very common again this is viac on a two minute chart again the stock is going up move back to the 20 moving average which is the second moving this light blue and then you go up and in this case from 40 dollars to 41 dollars uh, so the criteria is very easy to recognize again you want very strong stock on the two minute chart this is bank of america is moving up dropping to this uh, 20 moving average on vwap and then again you bounce back and you just take your profit here it's very very beautiful very very easy to trade and if you can find the stock and play like easily like this one is the fsr on a two minute chart again you have a very very strong uptrend you know just as soon as it hit this 20 moving average you go long and you know you take the profit as it goes up these are really really nice scalp very difficult very uh you know hard to come by but very powerful the, the accuracy of this strategy is really high and i really like that so if you want to do the summary of that is uh, you know you have to identify the stock in play that is trending higher between 9 30 to 10 a.m at between 10 to 11 any entry any uh, pullback to 20 moving average on two minute chart could be a good long and you take the profit as it goes up above the nine moving average and high of the day and the stop loss would be when uh, you know you lose the 20 moving average i trade this a lot this is one of my favorite strategies if you are part of variable traders you see that i i trade this a lot and i love that uh, the last part of this uh, presentation, I want to talk about the psychology a little bit. So again, I give you three, four examples, uh, overview of this strategy, but the psychology is really important. You know, th these are really simple when you look at it, but when you actually come into trading, the emotions are becoming very, very important. Uh, you know, the anxiety, the frustration from the losses, you know, uh, too much confidence when you're making you know, a good trade and you start uh, uh, really... Uh, uh, getting this euphoria and take the next trade without really planning disappointment from uh, some of the early losses that you might have 
Uh, these are all the things that it comes when you know you are trading, and the emotions in trading is very important. That's why in variable traders we have uh, psychologists and performance coaches to help you really overcome these uh, uh, these feelings. And uh, again, trading is really easy when you're on a simulator, but when you're actually going into trading live, it's just uh, you know you have to deal with all of these. A lot of people who learn trading on a simulator they don't have any of these problems because it's just like Someone in this picture that I mentioned that like, for example, when you are really practicing on when you have something without any risk, you're really good on a simulator. But when you actually go in trading live, it's like someone who's walking on top of the building. You know, it's just the risk is real. So, you, you know, imagine you're walking on a rope when there is no risk, like this is slacklining, or you're actually doing the same thing on top of a top building. So you see the, how the emotion would be different that you can't perform the same it's the same for trading as well the anxiety that comes from the losses you know makes you terrified uh, worried and you know you can't really uh, make the decisions that's why you have to be very aware of the psychology of the trading i think that's the most important element on uh, you know uh, trading 10 lessons that we learn over time in our community is that you have to develop your confidence know your strengths know your weaknesses you know and no two traders can be the same you know, you don't have to trade exactly like me. You know exactly how you can trade. Be open to change and learn more. You know, uh, develop your self-awareness about the decisions that you're taking, the mistakes that you're taking, and uh, learn to manage your stress. A lot of time, me meditation, mindfulness helps. Uh, know when to take a break. Sometimes you just have to take a break, walk away, and, uh, you know, come back when your mind is ready. Developing a routine is extremely important for day traders. Uh, you know to uh, you know become successful not only in trading is overall having a routine is very very important um, developing uh, you know identifying your emotions are extremely important and you know control your environment uh, in your trading uh, um, uh, you know risk is extremely important for trading psychology the details you know we have a lot of uh, psychology modules in our community that you can watch uh, some of it Mike my colleague developed that uh, Crede and Dr. Uh, Kenneth Reed, our psychologist, also you know, uh, prepared a lot of material how to prepare yourself mentally for trading. And keep pushing. You know, it's extremely important that you have a dream of becoming a trader up there. There is a lot of doubts uh, you know, in your mind, the fear of failure, you know, some early losses at the beginning. You just have to keep pushing. And that's really uh, how I became a trader. I just really wanted this lifestyle. I wanted to travel the world. And trade and make money and essentially I reached that dream so keep pushing guy that's extremely important one thing that I really need to emphasize is that these are strategies that I talk about for you know very briefly in this presentation you know you can adopt this and you can work on it for yourself but you really have to build your own trading strategy this is what we call the trade book a trade book is your step-by-step -step guide that okay each strategy entries exactly stop loss exactly profit loss exactly uh, that uh, you know you have to work on that uh, so like a manual like having something that you can look into that printed on paper you know exactly your entries and exits and then uh, after you build it you trade it on a simulator for a couple of months to make sure that it's actually working your trade book is tested and verified before you really uh, practice it on your real account a trade book would be you know it has to have a couple of sections like a stock selection Okay, what the stock to trade? How do you find the stocks in play? What are the criteria? The trade identification, like what are the indicators for trade? Getting into that execution, where you enter, where you get stopped out, when you take the profit, and the psychology and the consideration is a part of it. And of course, you should have some examples on that. This is what we help uh, people in our community build. Really, you know, if you are going to Twitter or to a community, you see a lot of people are actually going step by step, one by one. They give it even name as well. You know, for example, this is one of our traders. He, you know, put something and he named it the Nyquil, for example. Just, uh, you know, the, this is a pattern that he found and, you know, he just gave it a name and, uh, you know, practiced on it. And a lot of people are just making these trade books, step-by-step rules with examples, how to enter, how to exit, and you make it on a folder that's just very beautiful. Every trader should develop their own. You can obviously use our strategies you know as a sample but you really have to work on it for yourself 
And you need two or three trade books for different strategies. I you know, gave you a couple of examples in this uh, presentation, but it's very important to know that you actually have to build this for yourself and you know, uh, give it a name. You can go to the website that I mentioned, you know, download a couple of these samples that our traders, my senior traders at Peak Capital have. You know, we can give you these samples to start. But essentially, it's extremely important for you to build it for yourself. Like, uh, you know, if you go to bearabletraders.com forward slash gifts, you have, uh, you know, you can download my books plus this sample of trade book strategies that we are having. So it's extremely important for you to uh, just look into that uh, and start from that. But do not blindly copy that. It's extremely important because it's just you can't use something that I use. You know, you have to adopt it and develop it for yourself based on your own uh, personality and psychology. Um, it doesn't work uh, blindly copying someone else. Uh, and if you're interested to learn more, guys, uh, you know, come to our chat room. I trade live, share my screens, you see my platform. And uh, it would be a really nice environment. And if you have any question, you can ask directly from me. Hopefully, you can see you all. If not, make sure to go to that link, bearabletraders.com forward slash gifts and download your uh, you know, ebooks and trading book strategies. I think it's extremely important uh, for that. And I'm really looking forward to trade next to you. If you have any question, guys, leave it in the comments. And I appreciate if you like and subscribe to our channel so we can create more content to you. Uh, again, if you have any questions, just uh, feel free to leave it uh, in the comments. I'll personally respond to all the comments. Thank you so much and looking forward uh, to your success, guys.